Good day. My name is Chris Roberts. I'm the host of The Long Show. I'm here with John Perry. And Mr. Perry, we're here for a special day today. Yes, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Day and, and also um, the Day of Service that um, is co-sponsored by uh, some Antioch students, the Martin Luther King uh, Jonathan Daniels Committee here in Keene and um, Monadnock uh, RSV, the Volunteer Center. So, yeah, it's been an exciting day so far. And it isn't just yeah. Martin Luther King Day. What's no. the other part of it? Right. Uh, the, the Civil Rights Day. Yeah. Yep. And that's, um, you know, that's something that, that New Hampshire has put on, too, that um, and, you know, here locally um, through the committee that I serve on with um, uh, with the Martin Luther King, Jonathan Daniels Committee. I mean, it's that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, trying to right. Pull out exactly. Jonathan the Daniels. Jonathan Daniels piece. Um, yeah, it, it it is. You know, it's nice to have a, a local connection too, and and to remind local people, especially young people, um, that there is a local connection to the civil rights picture, and and that um, as we spoke earlier, that it's not <coughs> looking around keen. It isn't, or in, in this community, it isn't necessarily the most racially diverse, but that there are some connections and, and different types of diversity that you can um, you can appreciate too. And we had talked earlier, we hope to, to get your father on coming up. Your right. father had a connection. Yes, and I actually, um, I'm named after Jonathan Daniels, and, and it's always been something that I've been proud of and something that I've grown up with knowing John's story. Um, but, uh, yeah, my father actually, um, when he was young, uh, <coughs> lived two houses down on School Street, two houses away from um, Jonathan Daniels, and... Uh, they were born, I think, about two weeks apart, so they grew up together um, and uh, remained close throughout their lives. And, and um, you know, I've, I've grown up, like I said, hearing John's story and, and hearing not just the story that, you know, how John met his, his unfortunate end, but really um, what he was like as a kid and what he was like, you know, why he made some of the choices that he made and, and um, kind of growing to understand that uh, that it doesn't take um, someone is someone doesn't necessarily grow up a hero to do something heroic and to do something um, kind of bigger than themselves uh, and that's been an, an important thing that I've tried to pass along as a teacher tried to pass along to students um, and, and to as the extent that it's possible tried to live my life following that example as well yep because if you look through history you said you teach. When you look at famous Americans or famous people, very few of them ever decided my dream is to be a hero. My dream may, may do this or that, but they always seem to step up at the right time. Right. And it's, it's the choices you make and, and um, not always the huge, grandiose life choices you make. And those are definitely important, but it's the choices you make, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis that... that uh, you know, obviously John had made some big choices to help out with the civil rights movement, but that, um, you know, the, the choice that he's probably most famous for, unfortunately, is the, the choice that he made right at the end um, to save another person's life, to, <coughs> excuse me, step in front of um, a shotgun and, and save another person's life. That wasn't something that he had time to sit aside and say, well, wait a second, you know, what does this mean for me? And what is this, you know, what are the... Uh, uh, you know, what are going to be the repercussions of this? It was a split second. You know, I'm going to put someone else's life in front of my own. And, and um, you know, it's those split second decisions that can really obviously change the course of your own life, but also can just add so much to other people's lives, too. And when you're talking about it, you never know the effect of a single action. If we go and see that little old black lady, Rosa Parks, who decides, right. I'm sitting here, it right. just changes it just a big multiplying effect right right and and uh you know being so close to the um time wise to the um the tragedy that happened in tucson i think yeah. back to the um the young 20 year old intern who's being hailed as a hero mm -hmm. for for helping out um you know people at the scene and his response in the memorial service was you know i'm not a hero yeah. you know and i think mm -hmm. that's you know, I think that's part of being a hero and part of being um, someone who's so committed to the community and so committed to the bigger picture that, 
you, you don't do things because you're going to be a hero. You don't do things because you're going to receive accolades and, and awards and things. You do things because it's the right thing to do. Um, and, and because you care. You care about things larger than just yourself. Because Americans have a proud tradition of you step up, create a her heroic act, and then you go home being just the regular right. American that you've been. Right. And it's, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's what, I mean, obviously what makes people proud to be Americans, mm -hmm. but also what makes a community like Keene yeah. such a great place that, um, you know, we have people like that. And we have, again, it's not always the people that you hear about um, that have schools named after them or, or people that you read about in the Sentinel or you know, see on Channel 8, it's the people who are doing, you know, some of the little things every day that, uh, and then they just go home and, and they don't see themselves as um, community heroes, but they, they definitely are. And you, the committee you're on, the Jonathan Daniel Martin Luther King, you have involvement in the public school system and other outreach programs? Right, and, and I think, and, and this is just my second year on the committee, um, the things that we have done with young people, uh, for me, are some of the most fulfilling things and just seeing um, seeing the involvement of in, and it tends to be when you involve young people you tend to involve the entire community because their parents become involved their teachers become involved their friends become involved um, so it's been nice to see some of the programs that we've done reaching out to the young people not just to remind them of the story of Martin Luther King Jr. and, and Jonathan Daniels but actually to um, you know, to, to memorialize their lives in kind of a bigger way and say, you know, it's about appreciating diversity, it's about appreciating culture, and it's about appreciating a sense of community. And I know you got to go, but I'll just give you part of my grandson, six, six years old, Xavier. He comes home and he's saying, hey, we learned about J.R. today. And we're trying to go, who is J.R.? We heard about J.R. We don't know any J.R. Goes, our, our generation thinks that's the guy on Dallas, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, he goes, yeah, J.I., he's the one because they used to make all the black people drink at a separate fountain, and they had to drink at warm water. And he, and he goes, do you know how gross warm water is? <laughs> he says, if it was me, I would drink that. And it was just as a six-year-old, oh, yeah. the way you presented it to him, and he goes, yeah, this is, this is not right. Right. If, if, if I'm not unwilling to drink out of warm water, why should anybody else drink out of warm water because they've got a different color? Right. And, and I think, yeah, that personalizing the story and, and you know, putting yourself in another person's shoes. Um, one of my favorite books to teach is To Kill a Mockingbird yes. at the high school. And that, you know, Atticus is you have to walk in someone else's shoes before you can, you know, we don't want you to make judgments um, until you've walked in someone's shoes and, and see what it's like. And I think that, yeah, that story definitely sums that up perfectly, that from, from the mind of a six-year-old, um, that's what's going to stick. And, and, you know, down the road, it's going to become, well, this isn't it. fair either, yeah. and this isn't fair either. So that's great. And like I was telling you earlier, I had the privilege of going to Martin Luther King's um, National Monument last year. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to show a, a little short montage of those, some of the pictures I took, and then we're bringing two of the young ladies from Antioch who helped for the day of service today. Great. And I want right. to thank you for being here, and make sure your father comes. All right, I definitely will. Thank okay. you very much.
Welcome. We're back. I hope you enjoyed the clip. Part of it's in Atlanta and Martin Luther King's Memorial National Monument. The other part was up in Seneca Falls, New York, the Women's Memorial National Park. And so now I'm back with my two new guests. Uh, Kate Randall. Beth Briggs. And where are you from? Um, I'm from Western Mass. I'm from Southeastern Pennsylvania. And your students at? Antioch. Antioch University. And you guys are playing a major role in um, the Day of Service. What is the Day of Service? Um, the Day of Service was an event that um, the City of Keene, Martin Luther King and Jonathan Daniels Committee, as well as a committee from, of Antioch students, um, collaborated in, in organizing to, the main goal was to have community volunteers come out and serve local sites. Yeah, yeah we just uh, wanted to have a day, well there was a day of service last year on Martin Luther King Day and we wanted to continue the celebration of the work of Martin Luther King and Jonathan Daniels to offer volunteer opportunities for Keene's community members. And what are some of the organizations that have helped out with the day of service? That helped to organize it? No, the ones that are being helped. Oh, the, the sites. The volunteers, the yep. sites. Um, volunteers served at the Monadnock Early Learning Center. Um, they served at the Monadnock Center for Violence Prevention, the Orchard School in Alstead, um, the Samaritan's offices, and um, the Clef Johnson Wellness House. Those are some of the places. And same with the community kitchen. And the we and we have kitchen. volunteers at the community kitchen. Mm -hmm. I think I think some of the kids are talking going to the Red Cross to do some. I think some were going to the Red Cross today. Okay. And. Um, <clears throat> We noticed that there was quite a few younger kids volunteering. Oh, I forgot to mention also we have um, some of the Keene High School students went over to do some work at the library. So that was great. Those might have been a few of the younger. Yeah. We also had a decent family turnout, which was great. We were really looking to have families bring mm -hmm. sons and daughters and um, be able to spend the quality time during the day with them and also kind of influence them with volunteer work and just how important it is. And, and the part, especially we talk about families, a lot of grandparents were growing up during the civil rights period. So civil rights period isn't history to them. Mm -hmm, right. It's life. And so now it gives them the opportunity to trans transfer that life into reality instead of just the history books for a lot of the, the younger children. Right. And what they see in education so many times is that the hands-on work is what's important. That's really fulfilling for the kids. And those are the memories that people mm -hmm. take with them. And that influences the work they do in the future. So. Like you said, it is nice to have grandparents and parents transitioning that to the kids and doing it with them to role model. And how did Antioch get in involved? In this? Is Antioch part of the membership from Antioch and part of the um, Martin Luther King, Jonathan Daniels community? Our supervisor, um, Gargi Roysakar, is also a member of the city of Keene's Martin Luther King, Jonathan Daniels committee. Um, so she was kind of the bridge between the committee and our student committee. Um, so that was how we merged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, like I had said earlier, they had done it last year, so I'm, I'm assuming that it came from that bridge between the two committees as well, and we just continued it. There were two students who had led it last year um, who are kind of mentors to us, so they gave us the feedback from what they had done last year and kind of guided us along the way, and we're there today to help volunteer as well, so we have a big thank you for them. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you, you guys are working on your PhDs. It's a SIDI. SIDI, yeah. It's still it's a doctorate, but it's um it's more for practitioners. So, yeah, we're first year, so <laughs> we're getting to know Keen and Antioch and the life of graduate <laughs> graduate school at the same time of organizing this. So right, not which helps. Of, not much of a salary, not much of an income, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> right Later now or in the future? Yeah. <laughs> Right now, no. Well, hopefully in the future, right? Mm -hmm, that's hopefully. what we strive for. for we four tell or five ourselves years. that after working for five years. <clears throat> so, how big is the Antioch group? I, I saw a number of other people working the tables with you this morning. Yeah, we um, people played different roles and were involved at different levels. Um, there were three of us: one who couldn't be here today, who helped in the planning process, um, and then we had the two who mentored. From, who are fourth years who mentored us this year. And then um, the students, the other Antioch students who are here today, some volunteered, but a big group were running a workshop for um, staff at the Big Brothers Big Sisters who are coming to the Keene Rec Center. So that was um, another portion of the group. Yeah. Some of the CERD members also went out to volunteer at the Monadnock Center for Violence Prevention. So they did a shift there and then they came to run a workshop. So they've been a big help. Mm -hmm. We really enjoyed their involvement. 
So we know we call it the day of service, but it isn't just one day over the year. You, you're involved in other type of community um, services? Yeah, well, we come out of um, the support group for racial and ethnic diversity at Antioch uh, University, and specifically in our department, which is clinical psychology. So that's where most of the Antioch students came from, which you saw. So um, we act as kind of a support group if something comes up at the institution to kind of discuss and then um, outreach for like how the workshop is going with multiculturalism and just like the name says, a support group for um, ethnic and racial diversity. So we do things throughout the year, but this is kind of our, um, I think, our biggest event in the community. We try to do, um, what's nice about the support group is that we focus on doing some things locally, and then there's also some um, international things that we address, like sometimes we'll take trips um, and the group will go to support um, other countries that have had any kind of mm -hmm. natural disasters or issues. So <clears throat> you knew to Keene. So what attracted you to Keene? Well, I mean, I'm coming from farther than you, so I guess I didn't know much about New England, but I knew that I liked the appeal of New England, and I just like the feel of Keene. I mean, I'm sure you can agree with me, the nice, like, the fact that there's, like, a main street is something that I don't have where I come from, and yeah. the college town feel is really great. It just feels like um, a progressive part of, well, New Hampshire or New England, and I think that was what was attractive, having the different schools here, too. So you can walk across Main Street without getting hit, plenty of crosswalks, yeah. places that yeah. have a bagel mm -hmm. and a coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when the main, it's nice because you have everything you may need um, on Main Street, but you still have that small town feel. Mm -hmm. So what was nice even about today in the day of service is we're at the community kitchen, and they're talking about... Um, local places that they get food from, which were some of the places we called and had advertised to volunteers. So you start to see how all of the organizations link up um, and how people may know each other from different organizations and mm -hmm. the community feels really nice. What do you feel about the community, how the community gets involved among itself? Well, I know the mayor was talking to us earlier today and said that um, he has like 22 committees that are all volunteer based so that's like he said 200 some individuals from the community who volunteer um, and I think that's really impressive that um, the people that there's a lot of people getting involved um, to work with um, improving their community and I can like you were talking about um, the feeling is that everyone kind of pitches in and that it's theirs and they want to help their neighbors and I think that's great. And <clears throat> You came, you're the one, no, you came father. Right? Yes, I did come from Pennsylvania. Yes, from Pennsylvania, yeah. So um, it's a little bit different, not that much. I mean, Pennsylvania isn't like I came from California. <laughs> um, but it is a little bit different. Um, the town I came from is a little bit bigger, so there's lots of a community feel. But not that it's like everyone hates their neighbors. But. Well, I used to live in Southern California in Irvine, and you knew no one yeah. on your street because everyone was busy or cocooned in there own little world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I like about Keene, though, I come from a smaller town, and what I love about it up here is that Keene's bigger, so they have the organizations who will work together, because even though it's a smaller town, sometimes mm -hmm. people still don't know each other um, if they stay in, or if there just aren't community activities. So the great thing about Keene is they do have all those mm -hmm. committees, and people facilitate community activities to draw people out. So, <clears throat> I think I, I this I should be able to edit this out, but I'm not going to edit this part out. <laughs> but sometimes I flub up. <clears throat> but I want to thank you for, for being here. I want to thank you for everything that you did. I want to thank you, both the committee and Antioch. You have something that you're proud of and something that we as a community totally appreciate. And thank you for coming. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank so now we're going to go to some footage that we shot this morning at the rec center. We're going to be interviewing a few people. We'll also see the, a couple of the presentations that, for the Jonathan Daniel Martin Luther King Day of Service. And we hope you enjoy this piece. Here we are at the Keene Rec Center with John Perry. And your position? I'm a teacher at the high school, and I'm on the um, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Jonathan Daniels Committee for the city. And what's the purpose of this day? The uh, purpose of the day is um, basically bring the community together and um, show the importance of community service and uh, 
basically carry on the legacy of, of people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Jonathan Daniels, showing that um, it doesn't take necessarily special training to uh, give back to the community or, or um, you know, necessarily always heroic efforts, but it can be, you know, day-to-day -day things. And um, I think in, in their memory on a day like today, it's great to see so many people, especially so many young people, give up their, their uh, day that they could be sleeping late or could be uh, hunkered in and next Those to a nice warm, warm fire, exactly, um, to help out the community. King has a proud history of community service, from the youngest people to the oldest. Yeah, they, they definitely do, and that's it's one of the things. I grew up in Keene. Um, uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents who definitely encouraged us to become involved with the community, and um, when I went off to college, uh, I went off with the idea that I wouldn't come back here because coming back home just didn't feel like success for me, and, and when I started thinking about it, I thought, you know, Keene has so much to offer. It's such a great community, and and a place I'd really want to raise my kids. So, and that's how it's ended up happening. I'll give you a final question. It's a, it might be a tough question. <laughs> Keene has very few black people in Keene. And a lot of times in Martin Luther King, you know, it's basically a lot of black communities or politicians. Right. And we have Jonathan Daniels. How did that connection come that the people of Keene grasped Martin Luther King's idea not as color? Well, I think, and, and as a teacher at the high school, too, I think that's one of the things that, you know, trying to, to get the idea across that there's diversity in, in so many different forms, that we're not necessarily um, a, a extremely racially diverse here in Keene, but, <coughs> excuse me, this whole community is, is extremely diverse with, you know, economically diverse and, and um, religiously diverse and, and other ways to find um, diversity, but also to find the common ground that it doesn't have to be you look at someone and they look different from you, um, that, you know, there are many different ways to respect people's differences beyond just the, the racial end of things. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, uh, Jonathan Daniels' story is definitely kind of a, a teachable moment in that way, too, that it doesn't take being in the middle of, of a racially diverse or racially charged situation to um, become involved. Um, that you can see things happening elsewhere too and, and go there and get involved and, and do what you can locally to, um, to send the message that you know, diversity is, is a positive thing and, and something that can really build strong bonds in a community. Well, uh, we were originally, I, I work with a student group at Franklin Pierce and uh, we were originally going to be going on a retreat and uh, kind of fell through. We've been uh, reading a book about the me-to-we philosophy of giving back to our communities and thought this was a great opportunity for us to come out. So, are you going to volunteer and help today? We are going to the Monadnock Aid Services and painting in the Cleve Jones house. So, Franklin Piss is really involved in public service, reaching out and touching. It's part of one of our core philosophies. So. Gentlemen over here, right? Uh, Thank you, no? Is that to the New York, I mean, to the New England Patriots for the Jets game? No, <laughs> no, no. Um, this is for uh, the troops overseas. Um, yeah, just trying to let's take you note. Uh, yep. Any questions? Uh, yeah, well, why are you out here? Are you from Franklin Pitch? Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, well, Derek said, hey, come help out with this. I was like, yes, sir. And here I am. <laughs> I think the, um, a lot of times people just think AIDS is a major city problem, not in small communities. I guess it's quite different. The reality check is different. Yeah. I mean, it's around every way. I mean, I've been learning it since high school and stuff like that. It's just not, it's something more of like a global issue than just large cities. It's, it packs everybody. So. And in, in a small city or a town like Keene, you don't have the resources to help the quality of life to an HIV positive or an AIDS victim as you would be in a big city. I mean, I live just north of Boston, so I mean, I, we're such a small town. We're one of the smallest towns in Mass. I mean, we have, we, I always volunteer out in Boston and do stuff around there, because that's more of one of the major cities that has the resources. So it's like, love coming out here and going to school here and kind of helping doing the service projects around these areas. We're out here trying to figure out why people want to come out and volunteer their time on such a nice cold day like this morning. Because it's a way I keep connected with my community. And uh, that's all. Who are you planning to help out today? You know, I'm not sure. I'm with a group from the Keene Unitarian Universalist Church, and uh, I guess we're going to be assigned as a group. Is that yes, we is are. your understanding, Carol? Same reason that Julie. I'm the, the people at the church are um, 
with my community and uh, my smaller community, and I enjoy very much doing it. And I was recruited by Suzanne, were you? And uh, so here I am. And when you come to the community kitchen, the makeup of the people that use the service at the community kitchen is trained, has changed drastically. Last year or the year before, people that you would never thought would have to use community services or use a community kitchen are finding themselves have to depend on the community kitchen just to feed their children. And so it's important and thing on the community kitchen, the donations are down really greatly because a lot of people have personal problems themselves. Uh, I'm Amy Siegel, and I think it's just great to be able to help with the community and be part of it. I'm, <laughs> I'm Mirabai Siegel, and I think the reason why I came is because these people have helped us so much, It's so, and people we have so much, and some people don't have as much, so it's might as well give back to them. It's a non-school day, it's eight below zero, and you go up, you still look cold. Ben Welsh. Ben. You live in Kim? Yep. And who are you going to be helping out today? Um, I think the Red Cross. You're going to be helping out the Red Cross too? Okay. You look really excited about it. Why are you excited about helping out the Red Cross? We did it last year and it was fun, so. What are some of the things you do by helping out? Um, we painted and we helped sort and clean the place up. Okay. Your name? Camden Round. You're going to Red Cross too? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you rather be sleeping this morning? Um, I actually woke up because I wanted to get out of here. That's good. And so you're, you're excited about doing this? Yes. You think it's really important? I just think I'm coming here to just do some help. And it's always good to help people that need it. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. You're and you're, you're taking this whole group to the Red, Red Cross today? Uh, I'm not, but I think our parents are. I mean. So who are you going to be helping out today? Uh, I'm not sure the Red Cross, but um, probably painting or last year we cleaned the beds downstairs. Okay. So, um, so those are the beds, so in case... Um, for example, they had a, a fire and they had no place to put people. That would be kind of help the homeless. Probably. Okay, well, thank you. Enjoy yourself today. So we're here with Andy Bohannon, the director of Keene Park and Rec. Good morning. Good morning. Big day. Big, Big day. Di Hopefully we have a lot of people come out and volunteer for this uh, particular day. What's the rec center's part in this? We are uh, liaison to the committee. Um, and we obviously help with the facility, get the uh, organization running up in uh, the day of service so people can have a common place, parking, and go out and do their thing within the community. We've got more and more people. We've got about 40, 50 people right here. Do you expect many more? We're expecting about 100 today, which would be a great day. Last year we had about 65, and um, hopefully the cold weather is uh, going to... Um, not keep people home and they want to come out and warm up their heart and then uh, serve a little bit in the community. Like I told him, talking to the gentleman before, Keene is really involved in community service. Oh, it's by far one of the most, um, the, uh, the community itself, whether it be the United Way or whatever the agency is, people come out and they volunteer and I think that's what makes Keene such a great place to live is everybody cares about one another and this is a true display of, of those actions. When you have communities around the state and around the country are cutting back on social services, people really don't understand, the, in some cases, millions of dollars of free time that the local community donates. It's, um, as an employee of a former nonprofit, I can say that uh, New Hampshire as a whole donates more of their time than their, than their funds, and this is a true example of that. But New Hampshire's to the rest of the country and um, you know I think we live in a very fortunate area and these people just want to give uh, their time and make lives better for somebody else and that that shows and it goes a long way well thank you and good luck today thank you Chris yep.
a professor of clinical psychology at Antioch University, New England. And these are all my students who have organized oh, the All your students? Mm -hmm. They belong to a student organization called Support Group for Ethnic and Racial Diversity. And they're all members of this uh, committee and uh, among various other community projects they do. And they also do a lot of research and writing. They, um, they've organized this day of service along with the Martin Luther King Jonathan Daniels Committee, of which I'm a member too, and uh, Manatnock Volunteer Service, RSVP. So we have three organizations working together on this project. And it's, it's really kind of strange we were talking before that Keene is really lacking in ethnic diversity. Yeah, yeah. But when you look at Antioch and you look at Keene State College and yeah, some of the other yeah, local, yeah. they bring in a lot of ethnic diversity and people just work together. Uh, we certainly uh, try to recruit and retain our racial and ethnic minority students. We have one student here from Rwanda uh, who's volunteering, but we also, it's important for us, for all of us to be sensitive to the diversity of our society. So, um, so it, it's not just racial and ethnic minorities are involved in this, but, but our, the whole community. our whole nation, we are a diverse <laughs> nation. and. And we have Margaret Potkova, who's uh, an immigrant from from Poland, and there's Amitya Love, who comes from Dubai, but of, of, of Hispanic origin. Sometimes you can't figure that out, but just physical appearance. The <coughs> she, and this is Kelly from Pennsylvania. Yeah. And <coughs> I'm Amitya from Hawaii. From Hawaii. <laughs> And who's the one from Poland? Yes, I'm the one from Poland. <laughs> Margaret. Um, my daughter, she lives in Georgia, and she just had two children from the Ukraine, a 13 and a 10-year-old from the orphanage. She spent for, for six weeks there. And we were just sending, she was putting them back on the plane, and they were fighting, they were hiding in the back of the car, don't want to go back to Ukraine. And so, but part of it is the community service. You never know who you're going to help. Right. And... Uh, Vince. Where are you from, Vince? Uh, Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. So. <laughs> so we got Miami, we got Poland, we got Hawaii, and you have Pennsylvania. And Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> so we can't pick on Massachusetts. I grew up in Massachusetts, so Four River. That's right. Right by the Rhode Island border. The dedication to. Uh, to to promote and reinforce uh, positive attitudes towards diversity, so all of us can do that. Um, all of us who are Americans, and and we have international students here too, so they also want to practice worldwide community. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to introduce you to Eve. He's coming to us from Rwanda. Hello. Hello. Yeah. My name is Eve. Uh, I'm from Rwanda, in Africa, and uh, I'm doing my studies at Antioch University. I'm doing my master's in environmental sciences. Yeah. And, and, and especially in Africa, there's a, there's a lot of environmental issues that have been left over from a lot of multinational corporations. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, a lot. So it's uh, most of the countries in Africa, are developing countries. So. We still have an uh, issue of population without um, means like for surviving. So they're still relying on uh, natural reserve. On, uh, yeah. So we still have a lot to do with our environment. <laughs> yeah. And we all know about 20 years ago, Rwanda was on the verge of collapse with ethnic violence and stuff. And it has changed? Yeah, now we are, uh, there is a big change. We are trying to work on reconciliation. And uh, so far, I can say that we have made a big step in reconciliation. Yeah. But we still have a lot to do. Everywhere, even in the United States, we've made a lot of steps. we still got a lot more to do. We've got to judge people as people, not on race, religion, or ethnicity. Yeah, I think uh, in Rwanda, we, especially as young, young uh, people, we believe that we will make a step in reconciliation, and 
never again genocide in country and in others countries surrounding um, Rwanda. So I think uh, we will try to make our effort in preventing genocide again, wherever it will be. Yeah. So every child grow up, growing up in Rwanda can have a positive future? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Good morning. Hi, I'm, my name is Ansel, and I'm uh, the chairman of the Martin Luther King Jonathan Daniels Committee of the City of Keene. And I want to welcome you all here. I know for many of you, you could have slept in. Thank you for not and coming to this uh, event. Um, before we start, I want to thank um, a number of people, uh, especially the organizers of this event, Gargi and the Antioch students. <laughs> and Geraldine Liebert of Mananak RSVP. I don't believe she's here, but she was a big part in organizing some of the sites. And Nancy Antarski, who's a member of our committee, who was on the organizing end of this. And I want to thank Mina, Kabina. Where are you? Committee and she did the uh, big, I don't guess you call it, board. The billboard at the post office. Yeah, at the post office that advertised this event. She's a really good artist. And she's brought all the high school kids. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I hope I haven't forgotten any key people. And also I want to thank Andy of the Parks and Rec for opening this up and helping us set up all the chairs and the tables and all that. Um, I, I think for many of you, in the wake of the tragedy of Tucson, that, you know, I think we all had this idea that we needed to channel our energies in some positive way, and I think that this um, day of service is certainly a, a way to do that. Um, so, uh, without saying anything more, I want to introduce Mark Farron, who is the... Uh, uh, minister at the Baptist Church on Maple Ave. <laughs> Mark is a, a former member of our committee, and he has a wife who has written a book on Tucson. Hey, there it is. There it is. Like, when you say my wife, that's what happens. <laughs> His wife wrote a book on Jonathan James, and it's a, actually a children's book. Ivy Merrill is her name. And uh, so, I guess, Mark, you take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm glad you're here today. You know, you could be still sleeping, like I have a couple, we have a couple of daughters. I think they're still sleeping. But they'll be here later. But I'm glad you're here. Or you could be at the mall, right? <laughs> but you've chosen to be here to, to do some special works in the spirit of Dr. King and in the spirit of Jonathan Daniels. So. It's wonderful that you're here. Uh, I want to just say a couple things. Dr. King has been my hero for many years, for, for many reasons. I'm a Baptist minister. He was a Baptist minister. and um, But he did a lot to, as you know, I think you know the story. Let me just share a couple stories. Uh, this one is a particularly good one. You know, he was assassinated, but a few years before that, he was uh, greeting a few folks, like a gathering here, and somebody came up to him came up to him and, and had a letter opener and stuck it right in his chest. Did you know that? And he went to the hospital and the doctor operated on him and, and said, you know, you were near death. On the ride over in the ambulance, if you had sneezed, you would have died. And so he got a lot of letters after that from presidents and kings and queens and politicians, but he loved this letter the most that he received. I'm gonna read it to you. It says, Dear Dr. King, I am a ninth grade student. Anybody in ninth grade? I'm a ninth grade student at White Plains High School in New York. While it shouldn't matter, I'd like to mention that I am a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and your suffering, and I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing to say, I'm so glad that you didn't sneeze. 
<laughs> the powerful story of a, of a young person like most of you here, and I'm glad he didn't sneeze as well, but I'm glad that there are young people like, like that young lady. Uh, in 1956, as Dr. King was speaking, he heard the phone ring where he was speaking, and then a few people answered it, and they came to him and said, your house has just been bombed. And he rushed home, and he knew his wife, Coretta, was there, and his youngest only child at the time, uh, Yolanda, who they called uh, Yoki, was there, and he ran inside, and he found out they were okay. But a lot of folks had gathered. They had heard the news. A lot of angry people outside of his house, ready with their weapons to go and just find these perpetrators of the people that had bombed the house. He stood outside of his house that day, and he said, Everything's all right. Don't get panicky. Don't do anything with your weapons. Put them down if you have them. Take them home. He who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. We are not advocating violence. We want to love our enemies. I want you to love your enemies. Be good to them. This is what we must live by. We must meet hate with love. That's one of the things you're here today to do, to, to share your love in this community and beyond, and I encourage you to do that. Richard mentioned that my wife has written a book, and it's uh, for middle school folks, but uh, it's wonderful for everybody. I just want to share something about Jonathan Daniel. I hope you know the story, and uh, his legacy still carries on through you today. Since John's uh, death, people began carrying on his work in a variety of ways. In Selma, where John spent much time working for civil rights, the Jonathan Daniel Center was created. It made, uh, has given many people, uh, children particularly, a safe place to play and learn and be nurtured while their parents are working. In his hometown, people who are homeless can find shelter in a protective shadow of his home church at the Jonathan Daniels building. We know it right here in Keene. And then we have the Jonathan Daniels Elementary School where they've done some wonderful artwork. And there's been artwork all over the country in honor of John, and films have been done. Love for God and love for people led John to cross many boundaries. And because of that, we are here today. And so I encourage you, in the spirit of Dr. King, in the spirit of Jonathan Daniels, to not just do what you're doing today, but carry it on tomorrow, you know, during the snowstorm, <laughs> whatever you're doing. Do it in the spirit of justice and of peace and loving your neighbor. Thanks for being here today and sharing your gift of love. I'm going to ask that we have a quick prayer, a short prayer. And so let's bow our heads. And, and I'm just going to ask for a moment of silence. And, and, and think of the uh, people in your life that have taught you about love and the reason that you're caring and are here today. So just remember Dr. King, Jonathan Daniels, but other folks as well. Amen. Thank you, Mark. And I just wanted to, two things I wanted to point out. I, if you don't know about signing up, you can sign up um, back. I think you want to raise your hand. Back there, over there, towards uh, jobs. And there's also a table, I believe, that has cards on it if we want to send messages to uh, our soldiers in, uh, who are fighting. Um, overseas, and that would be a nice, that's something else that we can do. And that's also, you want to raise your hands over there, over that. And, okay, so thank you very much. We have two Antioch students who uh, want to tell you about this project that they developed. And uh, they are Katie Randall and Beth Briggs. They are first year doctoral students in the Department of Clinical Psychology. Uh, Beth comes from Pennsylvania, and Katie comes from upstate New York, but now she has relocated in Massachusetts. And uh, they have been in our uh, department and at Antioch only for three months, but within a few weeks of joining our program, they showed up. I think Katie showed up even before uh, uh, coming to class saying that they wanted 
in addition to doing their doctoral reading and writing and research, they wanted to uh, contribute to our local community. And I said, oh, this is great because we're going to have a day of service and please do organize the day of service for, um, for our student group, which is called Support Group for Ethnic and Racial Diversity. So if Katie and Beth would come over and say hello to this nice audience that you've been able to connect with, all through email. I mean, they've done a better job because they have a baseball. <laughs>
caring for each other, imagining what it's like in other people's lives so that we understand each other better, and to do that with nonviolence. And um, I am so thrilled to be here today with all of you who I know are going out today to celebrate the life of Martin Luther King, Dr. King, his work, and to provide service for people, because that was his life to do that as well. So thank you for um, all the work that you do. And I'm here to really support you and do what I can to make sure that we always celebrate this day um, and think of how we want to move forward in this world together, and we will. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the clip, and we'll see you on the long road.